Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, I'm gonna show you how to take cuttings from, clone, and propagate these. These are Syngonium Mojito and Epiprenum Snow Queen clones, all coming from the same two plants, propagated hydroponically in a soilless grow medium. I am actually going to try my best to communicate how I cloned these plants because this experiment had incredible results and they were not the results that I was after or expected at the outset. In fact, the growth that you see between the planting and the final stage of this experiment happened within two and a half months. And the growth I'm seeing here is unprecedented. When we contrast the growth from the hydroponic method that is explored within this video to the growth of the soil parent plants, the growth is exponential. So let me show you the experiment that I set up and we can explore what happened. Okay, so on my journey through both hydroponics and tissue culture, I did not expect to fall in love with house plants, but it's happened. So for this next section, we're going to be taking the plant apart. Let's call it a plant teardown. I'm going to be using a scalpel, but you can just use some sharp secateurs. Just make sure that the cuts are clean so that you don't bruise the plant. Uh, I'll also be using Clone X. This is IBA gel. When you're using this liquid, do not dip the plants directly into the bottle. You're gonna to wanna to have some kind of dish that you pour your liquid out into, like so. If you add in plant material, it will make the product go off. I'm going to take the whole of this stem. We've got five leaves. So each leaf has a node below it, and we're going to cut just below the node. You can see here with this leaf, we have roots protruding below that. We wanna cut just below the roots, like so. We're going to cut directly above the leaf as well, just here. And that is our section of plant. Look at that leaf. That is a gorgeous leaf. <laughs> I'm gonna do that for the rest of our plant. So in the experiment originally, I was comparing and contrasting a water-based hydroponics to a media-based hydroponics and I also wanted to experiment with a little bit of tissue culture as well. And we will look at that in a future video. You can see here where I have successfully uh, transplanted the Epiprenum Snow Queen into two separate tissue culture medias. And I will be making videos on multiplication of this plant in tissue culture media as I have now successfully introduced it to tissue culture. I also took cuttings from the parent plants and introduced them into a hydroponic cloning and propagation device that we've already explored in a video on my channel. We're gonna add in some the Epiprenum Snow Queen. So I'm gonna take a cutting of this. I'm just gonna wash these roots off. So here we have some really nice rooted sections. I'm actually gonna save these sections for media. I think I might use cocoa. I'm just going to Cut them like that and we've got some really nice nodes ready for planting. So you can see there, they're really, that's lovely. I'm going to put those aside for the media. Okay, so this was a $10 plant, $10.90. And I've got four sections that I'm going to be adding into a media based propagation tray. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You could theoretically make these into $120 worth of plants in a few months. I'm interested to see the, the different growth rates between hydroponics and I'm thinking I might just do hydroponic media. For the media base, we're gonna be using cocoa and I'm just gonna be planting them into these pots. So this is a hydroponic grade of cocoa, which means it's been amended with calcium and magnesium. And all I'm gonna do is I'll dip the cut end so it has some IBA on it. And then we're just going to, like so, we'll do that for three of them. And we can just pop them into our propagator. And I'm gonna do the same for three nodes of the syngonium.
Very cool. I'm gonna put those into my propagator and I'm gonna put that under lights. And here we have my shelving propagation unit. But before we put them into our propagator, I'm just going to water them in with hydroponic nutrient. And that's gonna give us some nice moist media to start with. Put the propagator lid on, close up our vents, and then we can just put it underneath the lights. I set up the system and I time-lapsed it for about three weeks. Essentially, it's a hydroponic system with air stones at the base, which has hydroponic nutrient halfway filling a container. The air stones cause the surface of the water to bubble and spray hydroponic nutrient up onto the base of the plants. Now, usually this would pull roots out of the plants that you put into this kind of system. The plants started wilting on the top and although there was some root formation where I'd made the cuttings, I decided to abandon this method in favor of the hydroponic media method due to the hydroponic media giving better results. Here in my propagation shelving, we have all of the plants that I introduced into media, as you can see here. And I've got to say, they're doing much better than the plants that I had in the cloning device. So I'm going to pull out one of the Syngoniums. Wow, this one's got some nice root growth. So you can see there the root growth that has happened in the media. Now that is in contrast to our cloning device. I've actually lost most of the Syngonium leaves, as you can see here, but they're not dead. If we pull them out, we have new root growth on all of the nodes, as you can see here. And it is really healthy root growth, but for these slow growing indoor plant species, it's nowhere near as effective as the media. So I'm gonna abandon this technique for this indoor style of plant. I'm going to move all of the clones from the propagator and into this media. It is definitely working. It's just not as effective. So that section of video that you just saw was about three weeks after I planted the initial cuttings. I decided to try and salvage those cuttings. I didn't think that anything would come of this. I thought that they'd just die in the media that I was moving them over to. However, some surprising results happened. And unfortunately, I didn't put a time-lapse camera on any of these plants because I was under the impression that this was a complete failure. It has now been two and a half months, 10 weeks since I initially planted the first cuttings this is the result. This is an incredible result. All of the plants are doing incredibly well. So this is the original six plants that I had in the Coco Grow Media. And after an initial phase of dormancy, they exploded in growth. In a second, I'll give you all of the details of the light and the nutrients that I was feeding these plants. But I wanna show you first the other plants, the ones that I thought that I couldn't salvage, from the cloning propagator. These are the eight cuttings as actually nine because in this one I actually have the Syngonium and the Epipremnum. These are the nine plants that I salvaged from the hydroponic cloning propagation device and they just exploded in growth from absolutely no leaves. I think a couple of them had a leaf but these are just grown straight out of the cuttings. And the way you can tell the difference is I actually used a cocoa perlite media for this second round and smaller pots. And our original plants have a, a pure cocoa media. Now, whether or not the cocoa perlite 60-40 media had anything to do with these results, I'm not 100% sure because there's quite a few factors at play here. In the cloning propagation device, these plants were under a very intense light. 100 par. Look, I'm gonna see how they react to that. Whereas these ones have been under my DIY propagation shelving system for their whole lives essentially. But for these plants to have gone from no leaves to the size that they're at after only seven weeks, not familiar enough with these plants growth, but if we compare and contrast that to the parent plants, which have been outside. So they've been living out here under my balcony. 
and we'll take them inside. And I haven't taken any extra cuttings from these since, but you can see that we really do not have much growth from our parent plants. Now these are both in soil, the soil that they came in from the nursery, and I've been watering them fairly regularly as well. I can actually tell you the amount of light that they're receiving, and we'll look at that in a second compared to our propagation shelving, and they are healthy, but they really haven't excelled in growth um, and you can see where I've taken the cuttings and how much new growth we've gained from the node below. We're not achieving the same rate of growth as these plants. This is the plant that came out of the propagator and into cocoa perlite hydroponic media. We've pretty much got a plant that's accelerated to half the size of our parent plant. And we have four of those just from that second batch. And if we look at the first batch, with an extra three weeks of growth, we have a plant that's about three quarters the size of our parent plant. And I put that down to the hydroponic method. I do actually want to compare the light intensity. So under my propagation shelving, the light intensity is 81. So 81 par, which is photosynthetically active radiation. And where the plants would be, it's about 110. So not high par at all. And these results were entirely under this light. So the sun's out. I just wanna check what kind of par we're getting. Okay, so we're getting about 22 par, but the leaves would actually be facing out to the edge of my veranda because the plants are going to be facing the light. If we're facing our leaves out, they're getting about 66 par. They're getting about a third less light. So they're getting about two thirds of the light that the plants underneath the propagation lights are getting. And that's under a roof with just the light coming in from the side of the house. And you can see what I mean by all of the leaves facing outwards. Uh, they're all facing almost vertical to gather the sun from the side of the house. Whereas all of our leaves here, pretty much horizontal because they're trying to catch a light from directly above them. As you can see with these plants. Okay, so I think that there is an unfair inconsistency in the comparison of the soil plants to the plants that I propagated underneath my propagation unit because I think that they would have had an unfair advantage in the amount of light that they received. Not only because it's slightly more where the plants were situated when they first started growing, but bear with me here. There is something called the inverse square law and it affects indoor lighting much more than it affects something like the sun. Inverse square law means that light diminishes by the square of the distance from the light source. So when you're talking about the sun, the distance that a plant can grow is insignificant compared to the distance from the light source. When you're talking about indoor lighting like this, the amount that the plant can grow can actually change the intensity of the amount of light that it's receiving. So these plants growing from this height up to this height and touching the diffuser, we've gone from about 110 all the way up to 250 to 270 par. So we've increased light intensity by two or two and a half times. And as the plant grows, that means it can grow more vigorously and you sort of get this feedback loop. I really like this propagation method because as the plant starts to accelerate in growth, the plant gets larger, the plant gets taller, and the plant gets more light. In kind of like an exponential growth fashion, it allows the plant to mediate its own growth. And I tend to see this effect where the growth is extremely slow at the start, and then it just runs away. So what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description and at the end of this video to the video where I built this shelving system. They're literally just office lights. You do need to get the right wattage and the right color temperature, but that's all included in that video. And it gives a step-by-step -step guide on how to build this shelving system so that you can emulate the results that I've achieved with these indoor house plants. So the way that I was watering these plants was I was just using a watering can full of nutrient. Uh, at the start, I watered in with 
half strength nutrient. I would leave about half an inch of nutrient at the bottom of the tray. You can see the fill line here. And once the plants had utilized the nutrient, I would top it up with water all the way up to that line again. And from then on, every time I filled it up, I would alternate between a full strength nutrient and water. And because the cocoa holds so much water and nutrient, even if it ran dry, I'd have about a week to get on top of it. It was extremely set and forget, and I couldn't think of a simpler way of propagating plants. And there it is. Those are the results to my hydroponic houseplant experiments. I'm blown away by the result, honestly. In just 10 weeks, I have an assortment of clones that I am extremely happy with. And this is an extremely productive method, whether you're looking to clone your own plants for your own garden, or whether you're looking at the hydroponic method as a way of making a bit of money in the houseplant industry. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. Don't forget to like the video if you've enjoyed it and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. And I'll see you next time. Happy hydroponicking.